Welcome to Monday Morning Express. Today we're going back to our roots. I'm so excited I don't even need my coffee. I'm here with Jimmy Booth, and I can't believe I forgot my overalls in Florida, Jimmy. What was I thinking? I don't know, but I'll loan you my gloves. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Monday Morning Express. Hey, do you remember Tim the Toolman Taylor? You know, ooh, 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 sure do. From uh, what was it? Home Improvement, Home right? Improvements. Like, would he not have felt totally at home at Roots? Like, there it was. You're gonna love this, guys. It's real trains, and there's just the neatest stuff, and you're seeing a little bit behind us now. So we're gonna. We'll look forward to that in today's episode. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, coming up uh, also, we're going to get back into Skype mode. We're going to be talking with Mr. Mark Mogison of PSC out in uh, Victor, Montana. We're going to see what he's up to in some new projects we just received in, Dan. Yep. And then we'll be talking a little bit more about the Brass Expo, as we promised you. So I'm sure you'll look forward to that update. And we're going to continue on with Mr. Boyd Reyes. We're going to look at the soldering techniques that he uses. Resistance soldering, regular soldering iron. So we're going to see how he does that before preparing a model for spray painting. So we look forward to that. And something big is coming. I warned you last week on Collection Update. So if you like brass model trains, you're going to want to hear our collection updates. Thanks for joining us uh, today on Monday Morning Express. So Jimmy, thanks for having us out here. I gotta tell you, it's kind of overwhelming. There's just so much to see here. I know I started taking pictures and it's like, I could take pictures for a week here. But uh, tell us a little bit, like Roots, what, what is it? What, what do you do here? Like, what's the goal? Well, it's a Roots of Motive Power Museum. And uh, we're kind of a, what we want to call like a loosely knit logging museum. We have uh, logging equipment from all over the northern part of the state and also up Oregon, Washington way. Like this? Yeah, like this. <laughs> Sweet. This high sir. It's <laughs> awesome. 1913 for uh, Bluestone uh, Mining and Smelter Company. This is one of our operational pieces of equipment that really? we, we run, yeah. Haul passengers with it on the weekends, on our steam days. Uh, we have steam donkeys and skidders and, and you name it out here. If it runs off of steam, we probably have it. And uh, it's a really neat museum. I, I moved here in 1991 and started showing up here in about 93. And the museum has grown leaps and bounds. Uh, when I first started here, it just had a few hundred feet of track. Now we have a nice loop of track where we can have a little excursion runs for the folks. And, and we have a really good time here and, a, and a, lot, a bunch of really good volunteers that put in a lot of blood and sweat to, to keep this equipment going. And uh, just continuing working on projects, whether it's a steamroller, a bulldozer, a locomotive, you name it, we work on it. Yeah, I know when I first got here, I'm like, I expect to see this stuff like on a shiny concrete floor with glass all around and you're like, this is a working museum. Everything yeah, here, you use it, it works. It's a living museum. And so, so we, that's we pretty really, special. Yeah, it's a really special museum. And, and like you say, there's so much stuff here that you can just spend an entire day looking at all the different equipment. It's got to be amazing inspiration, uh, and we'll talk a little more later about it, but just for modeling and seeing how to weather stuff, because you see it real here. And how long have you been part of this? Um, I can't remember the exact date. I started coming out here in 93, but I started being a part of it in early 2000s, I would say. And uh, you know, we have a locomotive school, steam school, uh, railroad safety classes that we attend. And so we get instructed throughout the year on, you know, basic, you know, items to, to stay safe, but also to operate the equipment in a most efficient manner. And so it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a good group of guys and, and we really enjoy doing it. So. Well, thanks. Looking forward to looking around a little bit more. Yeah, and if you guys come back out, we'll fire this thing up for you and we'll have a good time. So Jimmy, I got to thinking with all this super cool stuff around here, if there was anything you would consider or want to make a brass model of that hasn't already been done, I mean, you already did the Climax and Heisler's have been done, but what would it be that you'd want to make a model of? Well, I've always had a passion for maintenance away equipment, man. There's some really cool steam operated maintenance away pieces here at the museum. And my favorite's this a Weyerhaeuser Forest Products Ohio Crane. And I would think with today's technology, 
uh, with DCC and Micromo motors and that type of thing, we can make a, a operable crane with the working winches, uh, boom lowering, and, and this crane happens to be self-propelled. Really? And so, you know, that would be a really interesting project. And so maybe that would be something that uh, customers would like to see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you say that, I mean, you got a Clyde track layer over there, right? Yeah. How many of those exist prototype? Yeah, not very many. I, I don't know exact number, but uh, this is the, that's the only one I've ever seen in a museum. Yeah. And so it's a really special piece of equipment. And, and once again, you know, it might be something that we can make a working model out of rather than just a static piece right. that sits on a shelf. Right. How cool. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. This is a... A really neat uh, piece being self-propelled would, would be so cool. You think you could pull it off an HO scale with all those features? Hey, if I could pull off the big boy, I could pull it That's true. Off. Now anything's possible. Anything's possible. You raise the bar high enough, and That's somehow right. you got to get back up there. That's right. That's what I like doing. Well, hey, places like this are meant for dreaming, right? That's right. If it wasn't for <laughs> dreams, none of this would happen. That's right. Very cool. In this week's project updates, we want to just bring you up to speed on a couple of different importers. Uh, first of all, the code chart tells us that the Los Angeles Limited, as well as the City of St. Louis project, those are going to be delivered here at the end of September. So we're looking forward to that. A little bit of a delay, but uh, we're looking forward to receiving that pretty soon. And then here's an update from uh, UTI. Uh, Chuck Stead so kindly had wrote this for us. He brought it over to us telling us about uh, the PA uh, units, uh, the Southern Pacific PAs. Uh, Seho has informed him that uh, these will be shipping from Korea at the end of September. So we know you're going to be looking forward to that. We have a lot of reservations, but I think we still have just a few more left on those. Uh, so if you want to get those, go ahead and check out our site at brasstrains.com. And of course, uh, as far as the Cross Mafes, uh, another UTI hood project, uh, it was handed over to Burim about a month ago, the data package that is. They tell us that they've started to uh, review the 3D drawing process. They expect pilot models by the end of 2017 with delivery set for the summer fall of 2018. So we look forward to that. Now, UTI also tells us they're still taking reservations for all of the versions, uh, including the 9010, which is that specific version that is being restored uh, as restored by the Pacific Locomotive Association at Niles Canyon in the Bay Area. So. Uh, we look forward to that one, of course, in the special presentation case. So if you want to get orders for that, go ahead and get those in. And then finally, the Illinois Central project continues. Uh, it's in the research phase. Uh, thanks to the owner he mentions here of Iowa Pacific, UTI has gained access to several of the IC Burnside rebuild cars. So get your reservations in for the uh, IC trains, the add-on cars, and of course, the, the wide variety of 10-6 sleepers which are going to be produced at about the same time there. So we look forward to that. So that's just a couple of uh, items uh, in this week's project updates for you. This week, we're going to be Skyping in with Mr. Mark Mogensen of PSC out there in, I believe it's Victor, Montana, right, Mark? That's, that's right around the region. That's, that's <laughs> it, buddy. Hey, listen, last time we spoke, I believe it was real cold out there, but how's the weather today? Well, it's cloudy and rain, and it started. It, well, the last time we spoke, yeah, it was snow, and now we're just getting ready for some more. So, <laughs> wow. Oh well, at least three it's months of three months of fires and uh, eight months of snow. Yeah, weather's hitting everybody, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. hey, good to have you on the show. And uh, we have these beauties sitting here on the desk, and uh, Dan and I were looking at them, the uh, CNO H7s. So nice, uh, nice run at O scale. Uh, models that uh, we just received in. These are Boo Rim, right? Boo Rim That's babies. Right. Hey, so tell yep. us a little bit about these that we have here. Other than they took forever. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long project, but uh, he really did a good job. He, uh, we kept having small changes and, and uh, we finally got it to the point where we were happy and, and he was happy and move into production, get the things done and get these O-Scale customers, uh, you know, from waiting too long because they, they've been waiting a long time for these. So sure. it's, good, it's good they're in. Yeah. And hey, we just got them in today. We haven't even tested them yet. How do they run when you had them at your facility? You know, I, did a, I didn't do a, a complete run on all mm -hmm. of them. Um, okay. I only did uh, maybe two or three of each group and everything seemed to run great, quiet, 
and uh, they've got a good Swiss motor in there. Right. Super powerful, good radiuses, and uh, so yeah, everybody should be happy. They should go through anybody's switches that they've got, and and uh, we should be we should be in good shape. Good to hear. Good to hear. Now we have, uh, I, I believe, on our sheet here, we're looking at seven different versions of these. Yep. Correct. Okay. Correct. Two yep. of seven two of versions. those unpainted, and some of them come with the Van tender. Uh, you know, personally, I love those. Yep. They're just beautiful. But uh, yep. two of the versions were unpainted, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. That was just you know, and those those reservations were pretty old, but they still they still came around. They they wanted them. They wanted to paint them themselves, or they just like to collect oh brass. So. Right. Right. But okay. yeah, we did three different tenders. We did the twenty twenty one RC. 16 VB and a 12 VB. Right. So those unpainted are actually one off, say, just one of each. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So somebody's yeah. got a, a rarity there that'll look nice. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. I, 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 I inspected that one and looked at it and looked at the soldering work and it was, it was beautiful. Nice. So people are, people are going to be happy with those. All right. And tell us about the reservations. What do you have left on these? Well, um, I just got the sheet and, uh, We've got two of the 17255-1s, which is the H7 with the 12 VB. Right. And we've got one of the 17565s, uh, H7A with a 12 VB. And one tender. <laughs> That's it, huh? That's it. Wow. So nice project for you then. And these are almost yeah, be gone. Yeah, it turned yeah. out to be. It turned out to be even, you know, uh, after, what, seven years of working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Good things come um, to those who wait. Hey, Mark, we were talking a little bit yeah. about the semi-coasting gearbox. What's that all about? Yeah, that's it's really, it's, uh, it's basically the way the gears are cut. The gears are cut, helical cut, so that, so that you can, like, if you took the locomotive right now and applied some pressure it will it will drive and uh they do you know uh they don't necessarily like when you shut the power off gonna coast on out yeah but but they'll uh it just makes a, a better cut in the gear and allows them to to travel a little bit after the power's cut good okay, cool. and lots of lighting you got these all lit right yeah lighting yeah there's lighting in the bunker there's lighting on the tender deck cab interior lighting ditch lights Marker lamps, number boards, headlight, yeah, it's all there. Yeah, a lot of opening hatches we see throughout. So yep. really nice, yep. nice piece. Excellent. Looks like, yep. Yeah, good build quality. Yeah, very nice put piece. That, put that. Put uh, that. We put the screen up on top of the of the uh, roof hatches. Yep, and right. Those that looks nice. There. Looking good. Overall, was, nice looking. I was just thinking these would look good in HO scale. What are you thinking? Any Mark? chance? Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's actually it's actually been discussed. Okay. Um, Boo Rim and I have discussed it, and uh, we've we've negotiated out a price, and okay. uh, and now we're we're just getting ready to make an announcement, maybe in the next month or so. Okay. Good. So when and if that becomes for sure, then we'll get back with you and talk more about those in HR. Absolutely. Scale. Yeah. We'll get you off a flyer, and and uh, and we'll be able to maybe discuss it on the next episode when you when you guys want to have me. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Happy to have you on MME. Hey, before we let you go, uh, tell us about some of your upcoming projects that we're, we're looking at, the next delivery. Okay. So right now, um, the drawings have been finished on three projects from the builders. And uh, the first one coming up is going to be the RFMP Berkshire. And I should get a sample sometime this month. I'm not uh, certain of when. Mm -hmm. It may be at the end of the month or so. And then, uh, you know, maybe three to four months after that, we'll see some some production. But when I get those sample models, we'll uh, we'll get them down to you. I planned on doing that and uh, let you guys put them on your show. Okay. And then, because uh, you know, we could use the reservations. And then the Frisco Hudsons um, working on the samples now. I probably won't see those for another two months, somewhere in that neighborhood. And the uh, Seaboard Airline P1 Streamlined uh, is the drawings are finished and we're working on the pilot sample. The Boo Rim is right now. Very nice. He's been he's been pretty busy. So yeah, uh, <laughs> there was I don't know there what was he's a, been doing. <laughs> there was a weird there was a <laughs> some big there was project. A, there was a UP yeah. a UP project that got in the way. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, now that's cleared out, so we can go forward with all these others. So, a hey, nice good. mug, Mark. Yeah. But we gotta, we're gonna have to upgrade you, <laughs> update yeah. you. Oh, yeah. That's hey, that's a classic, timeless, beautiful. But you know, now we got the newest import is gonna be headed your way. <laughs> the afternoon beer mug. Yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. You it's can have bigger. both. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. Good. Hey, listen, and and you also wanted to mention some of your new announcements that uh, you have out there. You're looking for reservations for. Yeah, we started we started to get a little bit of action. I think now that summer's kind of come to an end, and we're uh, people are picking the hobby back up a little bit stronger. So we're starting to see some some action on the ninety ton shays. Right. Um, and I hope we can get that thing going. I think that's going to be a really great model, and Boo Room will be building that. Okay. And uh, and then of course you know if I get this new announcement coming out on on some C and O H sevens, but. Uh, yeah, that's that's the plan right now. And just okay. taking reservations and and hope to get them to come to brass. You know, there you go. So, well, we hope to pick them up ourselves. So again, as we tell our customers, go to our site at uh, uh, brasstrains.com, the new brass section, and you'll see these listed there. And uh, take get your reservations in for d today for these beauties. We know that they're going to be nice. Great. Well, Great. hey, Mark, thanks for taking a few minutes out and talking with us and uh, updating us on uh, all the current projects and what you have in in store for us here in the future and we look forward to more great things from PSC. You got it guys. I right, appreciate it. Take, Take care. care Mark. Right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. This is the time that if you've got anything on the model and, and it's a good idea to go through it and check it, right? Yeah. Just to make sure none of the, the rails or anything like steps or anything like that are loose, because if they are, now is the time to fix it. Not that it can't be done later, but this is the easiest and most effective way to do it, right? You definitely don't want to do any repairs after you're done painting it. So yeah, right now is the time. Very good. Get it okay. before the primer goes on or anything. Yeah. Right, okay. And you know, we talked about, uh, and we have here, I'm just gonna turn this around right. for a second. And this is your resistance soldering unit, your hot tip unit, right? And mm -hmm. do you rec recommend uh, that individuals have a hot tip unit, a res resistance soldering unit? Yes, it is. Uh, I That's one of the major tools. I'm glad I purchased that a long time right, ago. Because right. I used to use different techniques for soldering, from irons to uh, the torches. But right. that, if I was, like they said, if you're going to be stranded on an island, I would take a hot <laughs> uh, tip with me. You there know? you go. Leave, leave a lot of the other stuff <laughs> yeah. at home, but bring this yeah, puppy, that, right? That, yeah, I'll okay. leave the water at home. But and yeah. you know what's great about these units is they last a long time. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's just... worth the investment. Uh, we've had ours for years. Uh, I know we were interviewing uh, Bill Peter the other day mm -hmm. of, of PBL, yeah. and they have the first one, and it's still in operation. So well-designed units, uh, but just you know something that's necessary to have around for anyone who's repairing or painting uh, brass model trains. Oh yeah, that's definitely. I would not recommend anything else. I mean, this it works great. I Excellent. love it. So workforce. tell us what we're going to do here. What are we going to take a well, look at? Well, we got through the model and everything's on there. But just as an example, like let's say that this was the floor mm -hmm. of, you know, where the trucks mount and sure. everything, the floor of the model. Let's say we want to add on a, a detail part onto there. So for the surface, if, um, oh, let me pass me that little box right there, this detail part right there. There you go. Yeah. This, we're gonna tack this on like this, if this was an appliance to mm -hmm. the bottom of the car. And so, okay. the way I'll I'm move this out of the way so that we yeah, can see Yeah, so it. I'm gonna prep the surface on here. Okay. And we're, let's say we're gonna solder right here to this little general area. Okay. I'm gonna clean it off. Because you have to remove any clear finishes right. before you solder. Because you're not gonna have, yeah. it's, ba it's electrical contact. So you have to make sure that everything is clean, including the point for your clamp, mm -hmm. where we, because the clamp, that's what conducts. It's a circuit. Yep, it's a circuit. It completes the circuit. So we're gonna put this, and okay. that looks like an air conditioner. So we're gonna mount this right here, our simulated bottom. And by the way, what setting do you have this on? It's a 300 watt uh, resistance soldering unit. You have yeah, it on four, right? In here, there's all kinds of settings. This is the strength 
right up here. Your number one is for, uh, you probably use that for stanchions, yeah, very stanchions fine. Stuff. You will roast parts with this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you'll turn them glow, glowing red. So you gotta be very careful before you touch. You know, sometimes I like to practice with other parts that are similar, you know, the same gauge. Mm -hmm. So just to make sure that it's gonna, I always start off low and then we'll you can always go high. higher. Right. But I already know that a box like this attached to a floor, since this is a big surface, mm -hmm. requires more. So okay. I'm gonna start off with like a setting of three. Okay. Because I know it's got probably gonna be a setting of five or something like that. But uh, let me attach. Here is one end. So you ground it, yep. Make sure that your surface is uh, nice and uh, clean wherever you attach the clips. And then I'm gonna attach. Okay, I'll hold that for you. All we'll, we'll put it right in the middle here so yeah, you can see it. Yeah, usually it's a vice or whatever. So if I know that where I know it's gonna mark, I'll Oh, good idea. Put a line. Then that way I can just lay it, uh, mm -hmm. prepare it. I'll put a little bit of flux. Flux is a big deal. Yeah, you wanna make sure that you have flux. And you need very little. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. No need to pour it on there. Right, right. <laughs> and then, drop a bead. Oh, let me change my glasses. Uh, we need to see. <laughs> oh, there it is. I gotta go higher. Okay. Because we want it to flow, yes. right? There you go. Then I'll come in and mount the box. And the beauty of the resistance solder is that it, it brings the heat right to the point. Yes, I'm not roasting everything else and right. other parts are coming off. Right. It, it'll look right at the end of the probe. The probe, you just gotta clean it off. Make sure that it, you got a sharp point when you go in mm -hmm. there. Um, and how do you clean the probe? What I don't do you know, do? Just a little uh, emery board. Okay. Or put it on a okay. belt sander yeah. and just put a point to it. Just like sharpening up a pencil. Right. That's how and I as do it, it as it you know uh, goes away, you can slide it out and you get more and more of the probe. Yeah. Yeah. And after I'm done soldering, you have to remove the flux. Right. Right. And so that's where. And that's I'll, an important point that most people may not know. What's the why do we need to remove the flux? It's going to remove. It's going to corrode. It's going to corrode. It's going to corrode. And we've seen that in corrode. models, right? We've seen yes. corrosion. And so this process is so very important because if that's not done, you know, you're gonna get that corrosion uh, that starting pitting, to occur. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll start to turn. Very, very important. Yeah. So we gotta remove it. And so, of course you gotta let it cool here for just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Make sure you've got proper, uh, yeah, you know, nice and be. solid, good now. Yeah. Yeah. It's all very right. good. You can tack on there. So, okay. And then you can just pop this off. It's not the straightest thing because my angles, but but we get the idea. Yeah. Okay, very good. And so if this was gonna be mounted to the bottom of the car, oops. Oop. You get the picture, it's an there appliance mm -hmm. right on the bottom. So. Very good, very good. Okay, excellent, so that helps us out. And to remove the, uh, the flux, I use acetone. Okay. Just a little bit of acetone. So you got some acetone, let's show it over there. Yeah, I think it's, here's some people acetone are familiar with that. and uh, like a brush, just, a, so just dump, a, little dump brush. a brush and clean it off. But uh, 
if this was a major project where I was doing a lot of soldering, I would dump it in a bath of acetone to clean it, just like stripping the sure. paint. Sure. Um, but if it's just a touch up, a slight touch up, and you don't want to harm any of the other paint, I just get in a Q-tip and just go around, just washing it. Because that acetone will affect the paint otherwise. <laughs> yes, it will eat the paint. <laughs> It'll yeah. eat it up. And of course, whenever you're using acetone, make sure you have the proper gloves and ventilation. Uh, and and ventilation. And, you know, okay. All that stuff, yeah. We'll just keep that in mind. Now, mm -hmm. one other thing we wanted to mention is that, well, I've got my model. It's, it's completely painted. I don't want to mess up the paint job, but I've got a small detail part perhaps that, well, yeah, it's let's come loose. An air hose. An air hose. For instance, yeah. So what do we do? Well, with this, we still need the clamp. Okay. Has to make some kind of contact on the model. So with the model, we know one side's not painted. So we'll clean up on one end just where the clamp's going to go. Mm -hmm. Take off because... All, Majority of the models came clear coated to protect them mm -hmm. from oxidizing. So I would clamp right on that point, and then we're gonna put the uh, let's say the air hose down over here on this side. So I'd get an exacto. Here's the trick. Pretty much, you have to remove the paint and go down to the clear coat. All right, so that's where I'm gonna tack mm -hmm. on. Um, so let me just dump this on here. You can, you can let go on that side. Okay. And we just use this weight on there. And I'll just solder on a, an air hose right there at that point. Excellent. So once you solder on the air hose, same principles apply. Yeah. Right? Same yeah. principles apply. Here, I'll drop a bead of solder right there. Okay. Same thing, it has to, you know, just, uh, it's gonna be a fast tack. So on this right here with an air hose, you probably wouldn't need the setting of five, or you might? I'd still do it at five, still just, it at to, five. just to okay. lay it in there. Just, but just quick. Fast. Quick, because what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna just lay the solder down mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna do the hose yet. So I, the real big trick is to, to get that. So we got a little bit of solder right. right there. Now we can go for a lower setting when we come in with the finer detail part. Right. Because this is such a big piece of brass, I put it on the higher settings because the heat will dissipate throughout mm -hmm. the model. Mm -hmm. So I um, first, I just lay that solder down there. That way you have a, it's ready to uh, receive the, the top part. Okay, so whenever you put the part on, we've got our part on and they're still a little bit exposed. We see some of the solder, we see some of the cut mark. What do you do then? Oh, that, I'm just gonna go there and just touch it up with yeah. the, the paint and stuff, yeah. you know? It's it's such a fine line, mm -hmm. but the thing is that even with your detail part that you're coming in, let's say in your bag you have the little air hoses, mm -hmm. you sit there with an X-Acto knife and kind of scribe all the way around it. Just scratch off, clean off all your parts. Never assume that just because it's nice shiny brass that it's ready to be soldered. No, you have to clean off everything. Everything right. has to, the surface has to be cleaned off. Okay. And while you're holding on to that part, let's say, here's our, this is our air hose. I would touch the air hose, grab onto the air hose, mm -hmm. and come in with the iron from underneath to heat uh -huh. up the solder. I would never put the iron on the fine part because what you're gonna end up doing is melting Burning it. Burning that part. So you come in from underneath, Turn it on. And again, it's heating the whole yeah. area. It'll, it'll heat the area, and then you'll grab on. Right, right. Oh, wait, the bottom, it's not, uh, I didn't clean off the bottom. That's why it's not make, making contact. Right. It would but, be the uh, same, though. You would take the emery Yeah, you just or, go through and just start, see the, there's all this clear coat on there. Uh. So, just, let's see if that does it. Oops. So I'd hold my detail part, come in from underneath. There it is right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can come in and start tacking. The solder's just gonna melt. Yeah, it's gonna liquefy in there. Uh, but you just get the trick. Just sure, go in from sure. underneath there. So heat, heat it from it underneath. And just lay your part on top of there and then just release the pedal and then it'll cool down and 
and it's Catch there. on. Uh -huh. Excellent, excellent. And then just any fine little touch up after that. Yes, well, after that, I would just get a little bit of Gotta acetone on a brush and yeah. just lightly clean it off. Real. Right. You, you may have some paint damage, but just clean up around it. But it's better than the corrosion that will yes. still happen later yeah. on. Yeah, okay. be sure to use acetone to clean off that stuff. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Okay, so there we have it. So that's our soldering uh, mm -hmm. tip of the day here with using our resistance unit. Yeah, you know, hey, one other thing I would highly recommend mm -hmm. is some kind of clamping. Like I, I use vices, those little vices or clamp. Right. Just have your hands free when you solder. You don't want to really, I don't like holding onto parts. Yeah. Unless it's tweezers, but yeah, for this, I'd usually have it clamped down in, in some mm -hmm. way that I wouldn't, you know, this thing's not gonna move on me. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, some good tips. Mm -hmm. You know, I certainly appreciate that, Blake. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna get back to it in the next segment. We're gonna see about uh, the next uh, part in this process of uh, getting our model ready painting. for painting. Well, before I give you the Brass Expo update, I gotta sneak in a little collection update. Last week uh, gave you a little teaser that something was big, something very big was coming down the pike. Well, I'm going to keep teasing you just a little bit longer. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is. I'm just going to say it's one of the absolute largest collections we've ever acquired. And it is filled with late run passenger, diesel, steam, rolling stock, uh, structures, you name it. So you're going to want to keep your eye very closely on our BrassTrains.com website, and we will continue to give you further updates on uh, Monday Morning Express as well. Well, let's talk about Brass Expo for just a minute. Again, next week we'll get a little deeper into it. Uh, obviously, our plans got pushed back just a little bit uh, because of the hurricane and some other events, uh, but we're still planning full force ahead uh, the Brass Expo really is about seeing brass. It's about talking to people about brass. Uh, if you were there last year, uh, no doubt you're excited to see more of the same. If you weren't there, you probably heard about it. And so we're gonna have a lot of similar displays. Our museum, as we've already talked about, is bigger than ever. Uh, you're gonna love that. Another new feature we recently have uh, worked into it is what we're calling a wall of trains. So picture lawn display cases, lit, filled with uh, complete passenger trains. Some of our friends are gonna bring some of their very special passenger trains out there. And uh, no doubt it's something that you're just gonna be able to look at uh, and really enjoy. Uh, we're gonna have a little uh, booth set up for Monday Morning Express actually, where we get to interview some of you uh, about your love of brass. And hey, if it ends up making the show, you know the deal, you'll get one of these mugs. Uh, there's a lot more we want to talk about in the future. We'll fill you in a little bit more on the parlor car in coming weeks. Uh, a few people we've noticed have asked about the VIP and is that worth it? Well, we feel it is, but we don't want you to feel like you have to purchase that either. It's most important to us that you just come to the show. But just so you realize with the VIP, not only do you get early entrance and a little more access to some of the importers, uh, but you get a swag bag. It's going to be filled with uh, a number of neat items that we're sure you're going to enjoy. I can tell you this much uh, without overselling it. Everybody who took part in it last year and was a VIP definitely wanted to be a VIP again this year if they were able to return. So keep that in mind, and uh, we could answer any questions you had about that as well. Part of what we're gonna do at the Brass Expo is just talk about brass. And uh, along that lines, we wanna head you back out uh, to Jimmy Booth. It's neat when we were out there at Roots to be able to talk to him about the prototype and how that inspires not only the desire to build a model, but how it really keeps him intent on making sure every detail is accurate because he's looking right there at the real thing. So I'm, gonna, I'm sure you're gonna really enjoy this next uh, segment here with uh, Jimmy Booth back at Roots. We already talked about how cool this place is and how it's like inspiration for a model railroader. Now I have to say you're known for your weathering and I haven't mentioned this yet, but you did an amazing job weathering all these pieces. Well, thank you. I've, I, mean, I tried a lot, you know, I tried yeah, really hard to do it. It is so realistic. Try to make it realistic. Yeah. It's, it's important to do that, especially in a, a museum environment. Oh. You want the weathering to look as real as yeah, possible. Yeah, I mean, if this was all shiny, so yeah. thank goodness you weathered it. It's great. Yeah. Now, in all seriousness, like how does this help inspire you? Like you, you did this climax here and we have a real one behind us. So how did it help putting the project together? 
Well, having pieces of equipment at a museum such as this um, helps you get inspired, even like the weathering on bulldozers or flat cars or whatever. It kind of gets your juices flowing on what to do for weathering for models. But also you start looking at pieces of equipment like this. Like a couple years ago, I never thought about doing this climax. But once you start working around the equipment, you kind of fall in love with it. And pretty soon you get so familiar with it that you want to build a model of it. And so one day I went home and thought, you know, we need to build this model. And so Bill and I got together. We made a trip up here and we climbed all over this for a couple of weeks, uh, documenting it, doing 3D CAD work on our laptops. We each had our laptop right here, uh, doing all the drawings. And, and this is the final piece. This is actual uh, Climax. It was a Pacific uh, Lumber Company uh, Climax and it later got sold to Holmes Eureka Company, how it's lettered now. And hopefully one day we'll see this baby fired up. Yeah, it's really cool. And I, I know from like our perspective, we deal with models, 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 and then it's neat to get around the real thing. And it just gives you a feeling for the immensity and, you know, the actual mechanics of it. And so I got to think when you can get and crawl around, it, it's not just like you take a picture and you know it looks like that, but you start to get more of a feel like how it actually works and it has to make a better model. Oh, it certainly does. I mean, one, these are one of the finest models we've ever done, uh, PBL Climax. And, and it, it shows because here's the real locomotive. Right. We're able to um, draw it from conception, uh, have a pilot model made, and then actually bring the pilot model up here and compare it. You know, make sure that the domes look correct, make sure the stack's correct, make sure the, the wheels look good. Right. You know, all the drivetrain inside. You know, a Climax is a very special locomotive uh, because of its drivetrain. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we're able to get that perfect where sometimes you don't see that in a, a set of mechanical drawings. Right. And so we got all the little nuances that uh, it takes to make a really cool model. And that's, that's our goal. We don't want to just make models. We want to make replicas of the real thing. Yeah, and it's great to uh, remember that. Now, I've been itching to do this for a while. I have to get my hands dirty in this place. So thanks, Jimmy. This was great. We appreciate uh, thinking about the inspiration that goes into these models. Well, next week, you get to come with us to Pasadena, California, as we visit the original Whistle Stop with Mr. Fred Hill, just one of the coolest hobby shops I've ever been to. I go out there every chance I can. Love looking at the display cases, primarily the brass models, but mm -hmm. all the other neat stuff he has around there. If you haven't had the fortune to go there, you're going to love that particular uh, episode. Yeah, I always appreciate being out there with Fred. He's such a good guy. Also on our show next week, we're going to continue on and the Boyd uh, Reyes series, uh, the how-tos. We know this is something that uh, you really have uh, asked us about doing and people have been giving us such great feedback so far. So we're gonna continue that. But now we're gonna get into the exciting stuff. We're gonna see about uh, priming, about painting, uh, so much more in store for us, Dan. Yeah, we had talked about how that was one of the most things people wanted to see. But even people that weren't originally interested in painting were starting to get the right, feedback right. like, wow, I think I can do this. This is so interesting. So we just love uh, carrying on that segment. And to close out our episode today, uh, you didn't see Roland in too many of those interviews at Roots. <laughs> That's because he could not stay away from the camera of photographer's paradise out there. So enjoy a few more of those uh, great photos as we uh, close out the episode. Thanks for joining us on Monday Morning Express. We'll see you next week. <laughs>